Tang Kha. Also, would like to pay the respect to both venerable speakers that joining with us today. We have uh, most venerable Virya Thamo Bodhgandal, live from New York City. And we also have venerable Mahapanyo Tung Tan Liu Singh Justin, live from California. And of course, uh, this is the English program uh, known as Buddha Sasana program which is uh, conducted in the purpose of promote, promoting Buddhism uh, locally and in internationally, especially to uh, help people who do not understand Khmer to be able to um, have some understanding about Buddhism, about the Khmer culture, and some ritual practices which relate with Buddhism and Khmer culture to our younger generation, and also especially to the people around the world to get to know more about uh, what the Buddha taught. So this program uh, bring to you by the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in USA, uh, which is uh, presided over by most venerable Prehatikmani Mang Sang Dia Bert of Wat Mani Sataram in the state of Minnesota, USA. And today it is a, a great pleasure that we have come back again with another very interesting topic and also very a uh, common topic that uh, most of people uh, always talk about and especially among Buddhist people. Uh, the title of the topic is uh, the five precepts or some people call the five Buddhist precepts. In Pali term, uh, it is usually expressed as a Panchasila. So as a um, Buddhist, uh, we always get familiar with this term, uh, the Panjasila or the five precepts. But again, uh, some people may not uh, aware yet what are the five precepts and how uh, important the five precepts to our daily life and also to society at large. So today we gonna have um, those vulnerable just to provide more elaboration on uh, the five precepts, its uh, meaning, its benefit, and how to practice it, and what happens if we don't uh, follow the five precepts or break the precepts, then, of course, uh, please stay tuned with us until the end, as we are going to discuss this for one hour duration. Well, without wasting any more time, let me uh, start the first question with uh, Venerable Viriya Thamo from New York City. Uh, hello, Venerable. How have you been so far? Um, all right. Yeah, thank you for joining with us. And I know that now in New York is 9 p.m., right? Yeah. So how is everything at your uh, monastery? Yes, most of the time it's quiet. And most of the time... Is there still uh, people coming? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, as you also uh, very often, I think you always uh, provide, uh, deliver the five precepts to uh, our people, especially the Buddhist people who come to, you know, do ceremony, to participate in any programs at uh, monastery. So I would like to know uh, a bit about the term Panjasila. Uh, what is the meaning of that? And um, you know, how, how, how do you define uh, the, the term Panjasila and what are they? Can they please uh, describe? Yeah, first of all, I would like to respect the Pajams, uh, Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. And let me respect for all of you and uh, the monks, ladies, Gentlemen around the world. Yeah, Panchasila is a Pali word. Uh, it is a combination of the words. It means that uh, two words combine one word. So Pancha means five and Sila basically means precept and uh, principle. So five precept or Panchasila means uh, uh, five 
principles or five precepts. This basically means uh, for all sanction. Yeah, can you count them and say what are those five precepts? Yeah. <clears throat> One, do not kill any living beings. Two, do not steal any belongings of anyone. Uh, three, do not commit adultery. Four, do not tell a lie. And five, do not drink alcohol. Yeah, so thank you so much, Pante, for telling, uh, you know, for sharing the terminology, also the basic meaning of what Panjasila means, and also you pointed out uh, what are the five precepts, like, you know, to abstain, the intention to abstain from uh, killing, and then to abstain from uh, taking what is not given, or from stealing, you know, to abandon um, uh, sexual misconduct, or committing adultery, and to refrain from telling lies, and finally to refrain from uh, using intoxicated drinks and so on. So these are basically the five uh, Buddhist precepts that we Buddhists always observe. So let me uh, move back to um, Venerable uh, Justin Mahapanyo. Uh, can you explain a little, little bit more about this term? I know that you are very good with the terminology. You may have um, different you know, terminologies when referring to the term Panjasila. Well, let me try to do this properly this time instead of just yeah, taking that. Well, first and foremost, with the acme of my reverence to the Buddha's teaching, I prostrate myself with my five limbs to my deceased parents, Maha Ubasaka Tan Chukin and Ubasaka Tung Ling, whom I considered as my first teachers, my gods, and my brahmas, which is in accordance with the Buddha's teaching. Secondly, as prominent, I pay homage to the triple gem, the three jewels, which are the Buddha, Dhamma, and Arayya Sangha. Thirdly, my profound respects to my Upasambada, Mahayunun, and Namasaka to all the most renderableness out there. Well, practically, it has been elucidated already. Pancha is five, Sila is precept or principle, right? That is very straightforward. So those are the two terminologies that we translated or according to my um, research. Two terminologies added to one, okay? They both mean um, from Sanskrit and Pali, both of them, those two languages. And the five precepts have it all been mentioned, it abstain from killing, abstain from stealing, abstain from sexual misconduct, abstain from lying, and abstain from intoxication. Abstains from killing means that it's not just killing human being. All insects, including mosquitoes. Some people say, well, mosquitoes, they bite you, they give you malaria and so on and so forth. Yes, they do, but you don't need to kill them. Once you kill little things, it's a mass, it's to big things as I have done it myself when I was a lay person, I was thinking of the wrong way, right? I kill ants, I kill mice, huh? I, I kill mosquitoes because I was thinking of myself because of the health issue. Huh? So if you look at it that way, that is quite selfish because those living beings, they want to live as well, correct? They don't... <laughs> They don't want to die. And in addition, they don't have long lives. If we can have 
benevolence and compassion to small living beings such as insects. That's how one started, not to kill human beings. But once that's a mass, oh, it'll come easy, believe me. Next, it'll be fish, next, it'll be dogs, next, it'll be cows and so on, so what? human being. So that's what it means, abstaining from killing. It's not just human being, it's all insects. Okay. Any insects that you can see with naked eyes, you don't kill. People have asked, what happened then when you boil the uh, water? There's germs in there, right? Well, the Buddha said we could not see it. In addition, in addition, it is that is for our health. If you were going to drink any, uh, what's the terminology that I'm looking for? Bacteria, you'll be sick. You don't want to kill them, but you just cannot see them, right? However, you have to understand there's also time um, that we have to cogitate up on that topic as well. So if the mind saying that, no, I don't want to kill you, but yet I'm still uh, taking care of myself in a proper way so I won't get sick. The Buddha allows that because you cannot see what's in the water. However, if you see what's in the water, you are not supposed to kill them. Okay, so that's the first precept. The second one is abstain from killing. Abstain from killing, excuse me, abstain from stealing, meaning that you don't take things that do not belong to you. If they don't give you um, verbally giving it to you, mentally giving it to you, or bodily giving it to you, you don't take them, period. Thirdly, uh, abstain from sexual misconduct, meaning that you do not commit adultery. You don't commit adultery. You have your own spout, a husband and a wife. You consummate it between your spouses. You don't go cheat on them. You don't go have, uh, you don't, excuse me. I lost my train of thought. You don't commit the toll tree. You don't cheat on them. You don't uh, go have consummate with anyone's daughters, anyone's sons, anyone's husbands, okay, period. Do not do any of those stuff. Uh, not just a husband, excuse me, even a husband and a wife the Buddha said there is time, there is place that one must consummate, okay? So that's the third one. The fourth one is no lying. No lying includes harsh speech, provoking, mocking, insinuating, cursing, anything that you say that might hurt others. So you don't do that. It's just not lying itself, okay? So the last one, no intoxication, abstains from intoxication, meaning no alcohol, no illegal drugs, do any of none of those stuff. So those are the five precepts. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Venerable, for, uh, you know, elaborating uh, each of the five precepts. Um, as uh, Venerable was already mentioning, I think it's quite clear for our uh, listener to catch up some of the idea, uh, what are the five precepts and how we should do. But again, let me move back to Venerable Vrija uh, Tammo. Um, can you explain why the five precepts is so important? for us in, you know, in living society. Can you give some uh, example of, uh, you know, how each precept play its important role in, you know, promoting our lifestyle to live happily and peacefully? 
Thank you very much for asking me. And let me respect for all you can uh, you said already there are five precepts for uh, Panchasila is the basic for being good as a human being. So why are they good for being human? We understand that the life is only one. You have anything, you have the gold, you have silver, you have dollar, you have money, whatever you have. No matter how much you have, you cannot buy life. So life, the most important on earth, only one. And the life for any living being is the most important. So when you kill any life, you kill the most important on earth. And if you kill any small life, you may kill bigger, bigger, and bigger. You can kill human being. You can kill buffalo, cows, and elephants, whatever, whatever animals you can kill. <clears throat> and when you can kill uh, you are bloody in life you feel guilty you are you you understand yourself that you can be criminal you know that even you can hide from other people, but you know yourself that you're criminal. And you then never happy, never peaceful, and never fool human being. If anyone know that you are criminal, no one can trust you. No one can go with you uh, in a knife. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's the qualities of being good person. Uh, it is uh, the most important for human being not to kill. And it is not Buddha creative. It is the nature of being good, uh, being happy, being uh, harmonious and being prosperous in the society, uh, not only in the human society, but any society, any more society. If you do not kill any more, any more love you. And other people also love you, they trust you. They can be friendly, they can be, uh, do whatever they, uh, we want. So that, that is the nature of uh, being good in not uh, being good not to kill any living beings and we can also understand that not to steal so is uh, is there any society allow people to kill uh, to steal sorry no uh, there's no any society allow people to steal any anything anything the constitution the laws, the rule of the law, or any kinds of uh, religion, they do not allow people to, to steal. So if you steal, it means that you are outside of the society. You are not good, you are bad, and, uh, and people scare you, people cannot be trust. You know? So there's, there's the reality in our life. 
and uh, not to commit adultery. Who want you to commit adultery? You have a wife, you have a husband, who want to do that? No, no one want to do that. So if you commit adultery, you break your honesty. You have no more honesty, no more trust, and everything gone, like the family uh, have been built for a long time, uh, the family have been uh, prosperous, peaceful, very happy, very harmonious, everything destroyed when you commit adultery. So we know that it's not in the sky, it, it, it is in our life. We, we, under, we see that, we see that in the society. So not to tell a lie. Who, who want people to tell a lie? No, no, no one. So when you tell a lie, if, do, if they do not know you, you know yourself that you tell a lie, then you are not happy. You are not peaceful. You are not calm. You are not a good person. You know that. <clears throat> and when they know, you have more problem. Very dangerous, very risky in the society. In the society. So uh, not to take intoxicant. Yeah. And this one is uh, this one is uh, very popular now. And I heard, I think almost all people say that if you do not drink, you cannot make friends. You don't have friends if you do not drink. So uh, it means that. Drinking is not good, but the bad thing becomes the reality in life become common. And people take that uh, very, seriously, very seriously in, in life. But however, we know that uh, we, know, we know that it is very dangerous in life. Uh, people cannot try when you drink. Uh, people uh, uh, kill each other. Uh, we, uh, we have a lot of problem in the family because of drinking. We have a lot of problem because of drinking on the road. <clears throat> when they try, uh, in many ways, uh, we see that, but, uh, but people now accept that we cannot stop it. Uh, they cannot stop it. So I think that, <clears throat> I think that because of the bad culture, uh, because of education is not enough to cultivate, and because of uh, people misunderstand a lot what to live their life uh, happily, peacefully, uh, prosper, it, prosper continuously. Uh, so, <clears throat> so the alcohol is alcohol become, be, become water now. So, however, <clears throat> however we, uh, I, 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 I think that, I think that uh, how can we do that? The, 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 the monks uh, teaching uh, five precepts almost every day, and the monk also, the example of other people, they do not have problem because of drinking alcohol, but people do not see that. Uh, I, I, the, the one way that I can, one way that I can see that we can change, we can understand better. Uh, we have, we have to create. Uh, uh, we have to create the goal for 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 reduce them, <clears throat> and it is it should be from the monks, it should be from the temple, and should should be from the people who have power. So thank you very much. Thank you, Pante, for sharing a lot of you know explanation uh, in detail uh, concerning with the five each of the five precepts, how important each precept to our life and also to the society. And when you 
were talking about that, it reminds me about, you know, what is happening in the world right now, you know, the killing things happening, uh, not just in Burma, but, uh, you know, it's also uh, continuously happens uh, almost every, you know, every country, if not um, in, a, you know, in a larger scale, but in a, a, you know, smaller scale or in a, you know, private sector or national uh, sector and also international sector. So we see that uh, many powerful countries in the world now are trying to, you know, yield weapon to one another, you know, just to be boastful about how, how, you know, strong and powerful weapon they do have in order to destroy the world. So that's why it, you know, it brings back our attention to why the Buddha, you know, propagated this uh, very first precept, uh, what, how important this uh, precept to our life, you know, and what happened if uh, two men uh, breaks uh, this first precept? What happened to the world? As we can see that uh, we, every day we live in fear, right? We're not totally secure. We live in fear because of harming, because of, you know, killing one another. Hate is happening. Crime is happening. You know, killing is happening every everywhere uh, and every day. And again, uh, you know, other four precepts as well, which relate to, you know, what is happening in the world right now. So let me move back to Venerable uh, Mahapanyo. Maybe you could explain a little bit how important uh, the five precepts, like uh, why, um, you know, undertaking the five precepts is so important uh, for us. And what happened if people break, you know, this five precepts, what happened to our life and to the world? Well, the five precepts has it, it has been elucidated already. And the most important thing is that to train our mind to become a better person. If you don't kill, if you don't steal, if you don't commit adultery, uh, no hard speech, no um, intoxication, you'll have a better life. Simple as that. Simple as that. There's consequences. The first one, do not kill. What happened when you kill someone? The consequence of that is you will be going to jail, right? It's depend on the crime. Simple as that, bad consequences. I remember what I have read, the Buddha said that human beings are accountable for their own action. So if a person A commit a crime, a person B will not go to jail for him. A person A has to go to jail himself. It's, it's that simple. There's always consequences. So it is important not to kill. If you don't want to be in jail, don't kill. Another thing is that I have seen quite often um, back in the motherland, people steal. What's the consequences of that? They will get beat up severely because people do not have compassion. When their things being stolen, they're not gonna, you know, handle that well because they work very hard for their properties and for them to go steal it the consequences you get beat up right it's Simple for the present life right pardon me that is for the present life right yes yeah so um sexual misconduct people who cheat on their spouse. I think the reason they cheat is because they're seeking for the thrill. And the consequences, of course, will come to the divorce and so on and so forth. So it is important to undertake on the five precepts. The fourth one, harsh speech, right? If some people, as I, as I have written on my short discourses, and that's in, it's in my 
second book and continuing to reading it. Um, I, I wrote it in, well, in English and then in Cambodian, but I'm going to translate it in Cambodian. Um, no lying does not mean just for ha, right? I include it insinuating, I including uh, mocking, I including provoking, okay? So in Cambodian, I translated not gay, right? Not gay, the gay man check, check run I. Check run I. I not be the gay check, huh? That person will be scorcher. The gay check, how would I, right? So I know this is, in, is the English program. I'm sneaking the mother tongue in there a little bit. So that's the consequences. You mock, you provoke, you insinuate to others. When someone be able to tolerate it, to have forbearance, it's okay. That person will burn himself. But when, that, when the person is being provoked, mock, insinuate, snap back, the truth will come out and the person who provoke, who insinuate, who mocked, will be scorcher big time. Okay. So the last one is intoxication. What if you drink? You drink too much, you go driving. What's the consequences? You get into a car accident, right? You come home, you beat up your wife, your wife, your children and so on and so forth. That's why it is quite important to undertake and conform to the five precepts. The five precepts teach you to become a better person. It is quite prominent. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out, but some people cannot handle it. They think it's so enjoyable to, to kill, to steal, to commit adultery, to uh, lie, to mock others, to uh, drink, and so on and so forth. So my response to that is that it is to teach the mind to become a better person. If you conform to those five precepts, you will become a better one in this lifetime and in the next lifetime. Am I on a third question yet? What was the third question? What is the result or something like that? I could, yeah, I think, I yeah, I think you question? already uh, mentioned about, you know, what happened if we uh, break uh, this precept and specifically you pointed out about the present life, you know, what we are doing right now, if we don't follow the five precepts, if it goes again, the currents of the five precepts, uh, we will, you know, immediately witness, you know, experience the result of, you know, of, of that. For example, if you kill any living beings, what happened? Your mind also get defiled and you also will regret later on birth. And you also will, you know, will be, you know, will be, uh, will build more hatred, you know, it's like, um, you know, like throwing hatred to one another. Like if you kill somebody, then they're going to revenge you and you also will be imprisoned, for example. Uh, but yeah, I want to turn to uh, Venerable Viriya Tamo about, you know, maybe uh, you can talk from the, you know, point of view from the Sutra, from the Buddha Sutra. Uh, I think he mentioned about, uh, uh, you know, what happened if we break the five reserve, you know, like for, as well as the, for the life after, you know, if one follow the five reserve, what happened? And if one breaks the five precepts, what happened for the next life? For, for example, this life, we, we see that um, uh, some people think that karma is, you know, like injustice, right? Karma has no justice. Uh, some people are doing good, but what they get is only bad thing. You know, they only see the present result, but they don't know the cause from the past. Uh, but actually, this is a matter of, you know, the previous comments as well. That's why I'm mentioning this and I'm raising this question to a vulnerable Ria Tomo, if you can point out, like, some people, they live short life. You know, why? So I think there must be a reason which relate to this five reason, I think. Thank you, Ben. 
yeah, from the point of view of Buddhism, when you kill a living being, it means that you you are making your life shorter because karma. What you do, you get it. So if you kill any living being, your life also being killed. You kill someone, someone will kill you in the present time on next life. So this is the, the uh, point of view of karma. Karma sakamhi, karma tiyeto, karma yoni, karma pantu, karma padesaranao, yang kamang, resami. So it is who you are. If you kill any living being, you become criminal yourself. So uh, this lie and next lie, you will receive it, the result, what you have done. So you have to be responsible for what you are doing. It means that not to kill if you have your life longer. But I think the people who have a short life, not because only uh, killing of someone in the past. It is uh, depend on the person also, I think. Because if you have, uh, if you do not have a good society, you do not live in a good society, your life to sort. Because I think it is a politic involved, it is the economic involved, and many other things in the prison. So that's what I want to say. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Andre, for uh, pointing out about that. And I think if I rem remember correctly, uh, from the Jola Vipanga Sutta, the Buddha clearly differentiate, you know, the result of karma wise people, you know, uh, have, uh, you know, different personalities. Some people, they say, uh, people, uh, live long life, some live uh, short, and well, some are rich, some are poor, you know, some, uh, you know, more respected, some are not so respected, or, you know, so I just remember uh, from that Sutta, um, Maybe Venerable um, Hapanyo can uh, add more on to that, but I just would like to say that um, so the Buddha pointed out the reasons behind all the things, not simply just like what we are witnessing things through our fleshly eye and we are assuming the way we see it, but we never see it to the root cause behind it, you know. That's why uh, what I'm talking right now, just want to point out that what we are doing right now, we will get that result. So in this lifetime, if we harm others, if we kill others, so we will be killed, if not in this life, but in the life after, we don't know, you know, when that time, the, the karmas will be ripened. So as a result of killing, uh, we might also live a short life, you know, that's why some people die young. And there must be a reason behind that, not just um, basically the present karma. And also like some people, uh, still others things so uh, for next life maybe they're gonna you know be stolen uh, of the properties or can be you know something wrong with their economic problems you know with their capitals and so on so okay when bomb happen you would you like to add on to that you know from the sutra points of view well i have read that sutra quite some time ago to be honest i don't remember it but yes, we have spoken about karma before, and I have elucidated a little bit uh, briefly that some karma um, can occur in this lifetime as well, instead of carrying on. And 
I personally, this is according to my own experience. And the Buddha himself said already, don't believe in Tathagata, go out there and experience it yourself, yeah? which I have done. I believe in Christianity almost 15 years. I came back to Buddhism and trying to find out what's going on. I ordained it three times already. The first time as a samurai in 1998, for just a short period of time back in the motherland. When I disrobed, I cried it like a baby. I wonder why is that? I made a vow that if I were to be completed my task, I will take my high ordination. And I did take my high ordination in 2000. I said, that's done. I'm, I have done both tasks as a samanara to indemnify the, the mother, my mother, as a bhikkhu, indemnify it, my father. See, whatever I had done and I have done in the past, it carrying on to this lifetime. I said, I'm not going to ordain it again. My Arahanti, my Brahma passed on in 2013. I ordained it again. Okay. So in regards of the question, if the karma or if you had commit anything from the past life, will that carry on to this lifetime? Such as stealing, such as killing, such as uh, adultery and so on and so forth, the five precepts. I believe that's coming on from the past life as well. To be a good person. Because again, this is my third ordination, second time as a samanara, second time as a bhikkhu, and I'm still doing it. I told myself, no, no more, no more ordaining. Huh? But yet I am doing it. So what I have done, good deeds from my antecedents life is carrying on to this lifetime. So that's the same thing as killing, stealing, uh, sexual misconduct, uh, uh, harsh speech, intoxication. I have seen so many people, even the, my relative, one of them drink a lot. He got that from his past life, obviously. So whatever happened in the past, it's carrying on to this lifetime. Even the killing, just like the most venerable had already mentioned it. Huh? And I also had mentioned it from my last, uh, my last uh, live video as well. I killed crabs. I stabbed it. Okay. I was so afraid it was being so hot while boiling it. Okay. When I was a lay person, I killed that. What happened? I had this pain on the 3rd of uh, February. I had this sharp pain in the back of my, uh, underneath my shoulder blade. The doctor could not find out what's going on. They suspected to be uh, kidney stone. They drawn my blood three times, they could not find anything. The conclusion is that because I killed the crab, stabbed it with the pointed knife and the consequences, I get this pain in my back beyond one's imagination. So the bad karma that I had done in this lifetime, it has ripened it in this lifetime. So that karma, according to the Buddha, will not occur to my next life. Hopefully that won't be in my next life. <laughs> yeah, if, it, 
if it is paid off for this life. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> they'll just continue to, to be paid off, you know, life exactly. after life. I mean, yeah. exactly. Like yeah. the Buddha himself, mm -hmm. you know, in Mahaparinibbana, 500 cards crossed the river, right? Mm -hmm. During one of his past lives, he was a cowherd boy. He did not allow 500 cows or 500 oxes to drink the water. So it was not ripened until he had attained the enlightenment. However, due to his perfections that he had accumulated in Cambodian, we call it Baramai. And again, I would like to elucidate this a little bit so that we understand the term Baramai. It's not in regards to the dark spirit and so on and so forth. The Baramai, according to my research, it means that uh, Um, excuse me. That's in Cambodian. You can have to excuse my Cambodian a little bit. <laughs> so, so that's what Pibarmai means. It doesn't mean relate to any you know, spiritual, so on and so forth, including myself before I doing the research, I was thinking, oh, that's dark spirit, blah, blah, so on and so forth. But after I have done my research, I go, oh, yes, that's what Baramai means. And Baramai is uh, translated into English, it's perfection, okay? So after he had attained enlightenment, it is ripened and so on and so forth. So it just not, that happens from this lifetime. It happens from the antecedents lifetime. It's carrying on. And in this lifetime, it, if it happens and it, it occurs, if it is ripened in this lifetime, it will not be carrying on to the next lifetime. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank well, you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing about all this information. Now, let me turn to Venerable uh, Virya Kamal. Uh, I think I still have two more questions and we will try to finish it on time. Uh, my question is because we have been talking about you know the five precepts and the benefit also the result of breaking the five precepts uh, so far, and I would like to know you know somewhat of kind of you know antidotes to that if we want to uh, get rid of the uh, you know like not to break these five precepts, uh, what are the qualities that is you know in opposite of the five precepts, like, uh, you know, if you want to not to kill, so what kind of quality that we should develop? We can see that the people who can kill any living being before killing, they are angry, they hate, they dislike, they are not peaceful or calm. So the state of is not good. And we know that anyone know that anger, dislike, hatred, not good at all. And because of those, uh, the, uh, the people are not happy. You see that they are not happy at all and we want to be happy. We want to live our life to be happy. So it's not happy. So uh, it is the most important for all. We can see that anger is a small thing. Hatred is a small thing. This lie, a little thing. But when it becomes war, we know that 
it is a big thing. And the world can be changed. The country can be changed because of the war. But we understand that why the war happened because of hatred, because of anger, because we dislike. They do not like each other and they do not have love or compassion. So uh, we want to be happy, we have to have love, we have to have compassion. We have to develop love and compassion. We have to develop being good person. And being good person do not kill any living being. We understand that in our life. So uh, the teachings of Buddha is inside our life and outside our life also, everything is involved, everything is related to each other. So uh, uh, we, we want to have love, other people want to have love, and any kinds of animal, animals want to have love. And so that we can live uh, with each other in the society happily and peacefully. Uh, yeah, so you were talking about the metta, right? Which is the opposite of panatipata, uh, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so is that uh, is that your ans- the answer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing mm-hmm. with that. Uh, you know, as we have been talking about the five precepts, yeah. You know, so, uh, at the same time, the Buddha also mentioned the five antidotes to the five precepts. You know, like. Um, if we want to refrain from killing, so we have to develop metta, you know, as you have mentioned that uh, because of hatred, because of dosa, that people are, you know, are courageous, you know, to uh, commit killing any other living beings. So if we develop metta, you know, uh, loving friendliness or loving kindness, so that we won't have the courage to kill others, even a small insect, so that is the truth, you know. So let me move to Venerable uh, Justin. Uh, do you have anything else to add on to that? What are the other four antidotes to the four precepts? Antidotes to the in order to um, again, based on my personal experience, I um, do on to other like you would like to do on to you. Okay killing, stealing, uh, sexual misconduct, harsh speech, lying, and intoxication, all those five precepts. What if you kill someone or you kill a dog even? Would you like to be killed? Of course not. So that's how you developed the benevolence and compassion. Benevolence, metta, some people use it, uh, loving kindness, or translated as loving kindness. Personally, I like the word benevolence better than loving kindness. Anyway, karuna, uh, compassion. In order to develop that, you have to look what you are doing, your conduct. If you kill, you steal, you commit adultery, you uh, lie. Um, intoxication and so on and so forth if you want people to do that to you go ahead and do it but i most definitely do not want anyone to kill me huh? unfortunately i had done it to crabs because during that time i believe in another religion huh? i said that's food right but and again they don't want to be killed. No one wants to be killed. And no one wants to have their property to be stolen. So that's how you developed it. 
before you kill something, before you steal something, you need to think about it. What if someone, someone does that to you? Would you be happy of doing that? Huh? Would you be happy of receiving that? Huh? Personally, no. I do not want to get killed by anyone. But if my karma, if I had done in my, from my antecedent light, I cannot stop it. Right? So for that, we have to understand the situation to develop the benevolence and compassions. Okay. And in order to do that, well, then this may be uh, not related to the topic, but I believe that if one will comprehend the three marks of existence completely, one will accumulate benevolence and compassions. And what are the three marks of existence? also known as the three characteristics of existence. If you knew that, fully comprehended, you will also accumulate benevolence and compassions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing uh, your insight on, you know, the how we can, you know, uh, develop some qualities uh, in conformity with uh, the five precepts as well as I remember in the Pali term, you know, as uh, Panatipata is the opposite with uh, Metta and then uh, Dinatana with the Jaga, you know, the charity. We have to develop more charity. So, you know, instead of stealing, but we should perform charity, giving away to uh, Dana. And also, instead of karma, too, you know, uh, we have to develop satara uh, santosa, satira santosa, like having, uh, you know, um, contentedness with one's wife and one, uh, you know, uh, spouse, something like that. And uh, fourth precept, uh, you know, like uh, telling lies, musawada. Instead of that, we have to practice sajja, you know, truthfulness. You know. And then the sura meraja, instead of uh, consuming alcohol which cause to lose mindfulness we instead should practice uh, mindfulness you know develop uh, our mindfulness in order to be able to uh, you know walk on the right paths which lead to uh, full liberation and so on so anyway uh, thank you so much for both uh, variable speakers for sharing some thoughts about the five precept and again this five precept uh, it it seems like very simple thing and some people might say it is very very basic principle it's not so important it's not so interesting but actually it is so important i think is the basic foundation of all wholesome deed the basic foundation which leads to uh, achieve the you know uh, spiritual development, which lead to achieve the higher mental development, bhavana, without the basic uh, morality or virtues, we can never achieve higher concentration or higher you know stage of uh, mental development, and that's why uh, in terms of uh, you know, human rights, a lot of people or the world have uh, acknowledged that uh, Buddhist five precepts plays important role in promoting peace and harmony in society. Like, uh, it is not very different from what, uh, you know, has been constituted in the, you know, human law or the human rights, like, um, you know, Panadipata is like the right to live, the right to property, the right to fidelity, and so on. That's just the basically, you know, if when we compare the five precepts to the human rights, and we don't have much time to discuss about that, but I think uh, next week or other weeks to come, we will continue on to talk about the five precepts, you know, like bringing out one each precept, and we will break it into detail, you know, about um, the, you know, each precept, how it's important, what happened if we break it, and we can relate it with the real life, you know, social um situation which which is happening in the world right now i think this is, is uh, so quite important for us to understand it and as we see that in a, in a ceremony uh, you know of buddhism especially conduct at the temple or, or let's say in any buddhist rites and ritual 
we never miss to uh, undertake the five precept. If we all remember as a Buddhist monk, you know, whatever ceremony we have, we always, uh, people always ask for deliver the five precepts. So that's, that shows how the five precepts, you know, important for our life and for the society. And that is why uh, the Buddha uh, focused on delivering this, uh, you know, method or factor so that people can hold it near to their daily basis, you know, practice that on a daily basis. Otherwise, uh, a lot of war, a lot of crime and killing, you know, happening. A lot of insecurity will uh, happen in society when people, you know, commit killing, harming one another, stealing others' property, you know, robbery. Uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of things can happen, you know, the, the whole society will become a mess. You know, the whole world will be blind uh, by their greed, by their desire, you know, by their hatred, you know. That is why five pieces play this important role in promoting peace in our life. Let alone we will uh, discuss this uh, in the week to come. I hope that through our one hour discussion today, hopefully our audience can learn something uh, which is important and also which is uh, you know applicable to daily life. And stay tuned with us for next week as well. We will continue discussing uh, about the five precepts as well. So again, thank you so much, both venerable speaker. Uh, Venerable Dhamma Avirio from Wat Chotana Ram, uh, New York City, and Venerable uh, Tung Tan Liu Singh Justin Mahapanyo from uh, California for share for sharing and contributing the knowledge of Dhamma with us today concerning with the five Buddhist precepts. So again, I also would like to thank you everyone who have been following our show. And finally, I would like to accumulate merit done through this uh, gift of Dharma uh, to all living beings in the whole universe. May all beings be happy, be well, be prosperous, and especially be liberated from physical suffering and mental suffering. May the whole world be peaceful. May the world be harmonious. May all beings uh, be happy and be well. So, no more than Goodbye.